Welcome to 10 proper productivity boosting tips. Not tips that you're gonna use once every two or three years. These are tips that I guarantee you, you're going to implement right away. Let's get straight into it with our little crawler tractor that we've got here. And you may notice my seat is just hanging in the air. It's not attached to the rest of the assembly. So that's gonna be the job we're working on whilst I show you these tips. So tip number one, we want to make this mount. So ordinarily, what you'll find a lot of SOLIDWORKS users will do is they'll go off, start a new part environment, design the part in here, then drop it into their assembly. We're not going to do that because tip number one focuses around creating new parts in the context of an assembly. In other words, in context parts. So I'm gonna click on new part in here. And the first thing that happens is I get a little tick next to my mouse cursor. Now this is looking for a sketch plane to sketch onto. Now for me, I'm gonna choose this interface here and notice it puts me right into the sketch environment and I can start using my lines, squares, circles, all the usual sketch entities that we're used to. Now tip number two is I would like to reorientate around so I'm parallel to my sketch plane. It just makes it so much easier. Now I could use the drop down here and just choose whichever view it is that I need, but that can sometimes be a little confusing to work out in your head. Okay, right, is that the top view or is that the right view? Maybe it's the front view. Here's the little tip around view creation. Use this button here to turn on the view cube as I call it. And using this view cube, you can just select individual faces. And notice it even gives you a preview as well. And that allows us to easily orientate around to where we need to be without frying our brain working it out. So there we go, we're where we need to be. Let's zoom in here and get started on it. So right away here, I'm gonna jump into my line tool and I'm just gonna start roughly sketching out the shape that I want this to have, so something like this. Now, you'll notice there's no way in SOLIDWORKS for me to add my dimension as I place my line. Typically what we do is we, we place the line in, then we use the smart dimension tool to size it accordingly. If only there was a way that we could do it in one fail swoop. Well, good news, there is. If I go back into that same options dialog, in here, I'm looking for sketch. Once I've found it, the option I want is this, enable on-screen numeric input on entity creation. That's a lot of words, but what it means is if I take this line tool once again here and bring it down in the same way, suddenly I can start to specify my size right off the bat and you can see the time saving that that's gonna bring. You're no longer putting sketch entities in just to go off and then select the Smart Dimension tool. We can just drop them in place, get the correct size from the get-go, and it's all done. Really, really simple, but really effective. So now that we've got our sketch in place, just as we would in any part environment, I can go to my Features tab and extrude this out. Now, I know the gap between these two pieces of metal on the seat is 10 mil, so I'm gonna hit OK on that. And there we go, we have got our in-context part. Now you'll notice it's kept me in the part environment. We're not back in the assembly environment just yet because, well, chances are we want to add a couple more features to this new in-context part that we've created, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So let me get a new sketch started on here. And I'm gonna bring through these two holes. That way I'm not gonna to need to worry about adding them in later on. And remember to use your shift key to make a double selection rather than select the body. And just use convert entities. Brings them right through. And as ever, we can just use our features, extruded cut. And here's another little tip. Rather than always having to depend on going back to the feature manager, which is another mouse movement, Anywhere in the graphics area, if you right click, you get the exact same options. So if we wanted a blind cut through here with a specified value, we could do that. Or if we wanted it through all in both directions, which is the desired result here, I can do that from my right click menu, which again, it just saves you from having to navigate back to that feature manager more than once. So now we've got a new part in there. I really need a second one in place. 
Now, how often have you been in this circumstance? You want to mirror this component into position, but we don't have a plane, we don't have a center face, we, we don't have anything that we can mirror about. Well, this next step, let me show you how that'll never be a problem again. If I go to my reference geometry here and select plane, as you typically would, now I don't even need to tell it what type of plane I want here. I just choose the two references that I would like to center a plane about and it automatically works it out for me. Complete game changer if you weren't aware of that one before. And then obviously to complete this, I'm just going to drop down, select mirror components. It's already picked up that new plane that I've got in there. Click next. We can change it to an opposite hand version part if we want. In my case, it won't make any difference. So I'll just hit OK. And there we go. We've now got our two components mirrored into place. Now before we go any further, let's bring our attention back to the sketch environment. I'm going to open this part up and bearing in mind it's all quite conceptual right now so it doesn't need to be perfect, I'm going to open a sketch on this face. Now what I want to do is basically cut a shape out of this just to save a bit of mass, reduce the weight, make it a bit slicker. And here comes tip number seven in doing so. Now rather than having to navigate up and move my mouse up to these different sketch entities each time, here's a tip that I use constantly, my gesture wheel. Now what this allows you to do is hold down your right mouse button click and very quickly go ahead and select the sketch entity that you need. It was that quick that you maybe didn't see it there. Let me pull it back up. You can see it's got a line entity on there, rectangle, circle, and smart dimension. Now, these are the standard tools that you're going to find on this gesture wheel, but it is customizable. So let me show you that real quick. If I go into my options menu and just click on customize, one of the options in here is mouse gestures. And what's really, really nice about this feature is it's context sensitive. So if we're in a sketch, we're gonna get sketch tools. If we're in a part, we're gonna get view orientations. If we're in an assembly, same as part, view orientations. If we're in a drawing, then we're gonna get drawing specific tools. So it's context sensitive and it can be customized to your liking. So tip number eight, often overlooked because users have got this tool set in mind with a different use case. The tool I'm referring to is offset entities. Now, where you'll see users commonly use this is to offset one line from another line, for example. But in this case, as you can see, if you choose an entire face, it will bring in all the bounding edges of that face and allow you to get that exact shape without having to try and sketch it out. So I can set my size, hit OK, and go on and use this for my cut. So getting on to tip number nine now, this is another minimizing mouse movement trick. So if you hit your S key on the keyboard, what you once again get is a contextual menu with useful tools within it to save us navigating up to our tool ribbon here. Just hit S anywhere in the graphics area and it's gonna pull this little toolbar up. Now it's quite similar to the gesture wheel, Think of it almost like the keyboard's equivalent of the gesture wheel, and it's got quick access tools. Again, these can be customized from the same menu where we customize that gesture wheel, or you can also use the search all components and do it that way. Pull up the tool that you need and use it without having to navigate up to the menu. Now, in my case, it's gonna be an extruded cut. I'm gonna choose my sketch, and then as we've done earlier, I'm gonna right click and say through both directions. Now, not only are these great time-saving tools, they also make you look like an absolute pro when using SolidWorks. Now, the final tool centers around the latest and greatest from SolidWorks, and that is the 3D Experience platform. Now, if you're looking for somewhere to store and share your files from, this is the answer. Cloud storage, which can be added onto your SolidWorks subscription. If you're looking for more details on this, or indeed any of the tools that you've seen in this video, please do drop a comment below. Now, thank you for watching. Do give this video a like, and consider subscribing as well.